What's up, y'all? Recently, uh, Jacoby Brissett and Sam Howe teamed up to have a joint practice before training camp came up, and they were having uh, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dodson, you name it, everybody that is a starter and a few backups, just to have a, a, a nice practice and, you know, just to get some more practice in before training camp start up. And it was just a way to really bond with the team and then, you know, also understand a little bit more of the offense that they're about to get into. And I just think that Jacoby is a great example of what we need on this team. I think he's a great mentor for Sam Sam Howe. And, and just when you think about what happened and how they put it together and then they came together, and I think that it was two or three days of practice. And I think that was a great time to bond. And they even worked out together. And we got all this information from, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the backup, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Why? How did I blank out on his name? The one that, uh, the wide receiver that um, played with Sam Howe while he was in North Carolina. That And, uh, you know, we went to, he posted on his YouTube page and uh, I watched it and I was just like, wow, like, I, I enjoy this type of content because they allow you to really get it. Uh, insight on what's going on because you know from where we at we don't really get too much you just get a highlight play here and there but I mean I actually want to see people miss see people get it see people talk you know actually have that interaction and just you see that they're human you know at the end of the day so I thought it was just a great example of just what we needed to see and then also it was just like when you was watching it at the end you seen Jacoby and just how like he looked like in the future he might be an offensive coordinator. I mean, he or wide receiver coach or a running backs coach. Like he was doing a great job of talking to the wide receivers about you know just their routes and just what they what they should expect and what to look out for. And it was just it was just a great it, it was it was just a great piece to see from Jacoby because one Jacoby he didn't look like a hater. You know what I'm saying? He didn't look like he was hating on Sam Howe at all. He looked like he was just trying to help the team all around. Like, it wasn't just, okay, I'm going to help Sam. I'm I'm just going to help just the offense. You know what I'm saying? He was he was doing his thing. It looked like he was another coach. And he was even coaching the coach. Like, they had a coach out there. I'm, I'm assuming it was a quarterback's coach. And they had him um, basically take them through a list of drills and – it was uh also uh Jake Fromm out there and he you know he was uh also practicing with them too and they were just going through a whole list of quarterback you know plays and routes and it was just like at one point it looked like Jacoby took over and I just thought that this was a nice example of just what Jacoby brings to the team he's, he's not he's not all he's not on the team just for himself and it's crazy in the beginning, like you would think like, OK, nah, he, he just trying to get that number one spot, you know, from the interview that he had. You would just think, oh, I just came here to start. I don't care about Sam. But no, he understands why he's here. But he understands that if Sam can't do it or needs more time to develop, he'll step in. That's what I'm getting from it. And, and it's just one of them things where I just think this is a great person to have on the team. And. Shoot, whoever lined this up, like Ron Rivera or Eric Bieniemy, whoever lined that up, just I think my boy need an extra meal next year. Like just because, think about how many people are developing Sam Howell right now. You know, you got Eric Bieniemy, you got Jacoby, you got a whole bunch of people giving this guy information, and then you got a a defense. You know, a safety net. We we have a beautiful defense. Top five defense, I believe. And, you know, that's how we've been over the past few years. And it's just, it's going to be even better. And the fact that he has that safety net for defense, man, that's that's even better. And then I also seen uh, the show on Netflix called Quarterbacks. Bruh, when I tell you, like, when you watch it, it's like you get a different perspective of what the quarterbacks go through. And it was like, uh, I think it was uh, Marcus Mariota, uh, Patrick Mahomes, and it was Kirk Cousins. And just like you've seen them go throughout the season of the 2022 season, 
And it was like they all had different perspectives and they, they their mindsets changed throughout the season. It was just like when I'm looking at the game, I'm just like, bro, why can't you make that pass? Bro, you did it last week. You won last week. You should win this week. But when you seeing it, you like, yo, this man is Kirk Cousins is dealing with so many rib injuries or just inner in, injuries. We don't even know what it is. He don't even know what it is until like maybe later down the season. And it was just like one of them things where it's like, yo, you don't even know what a quarterback is going through. And it is hard to stay healthy. Honestly, you take one of them hits, just one, just one of them heavy hits. Like the, a person like me would have been quit. But it's just like to understand that a quarterback takes multiple hits a game. And even when I watched it from Patrick Mahomes perspective, I'm like, yo, like even he still get good passes, you know, and he don't even get sacked that much. Like he he's not he's he wasn't getting sacked as often as Kirk Cousins and he was still getting hit. And it was like, yo, like I sheesh, like you telling me you're going to get right back up. And this is just the first play of the of the of the drive. And it's like, dang, like they go through a lot. And it's like when you watch it, you kind of learn how to empathize with them and then respect them for what they do and understand like yo just because they supposed to be great at it don't mean they ain't gonna have so many limitations they got so many they got to worry about not getting injured or how to play through an injury like if my ribs hurt I still gotta throw the ball like I can't even sit down half the time like that was just some of the things that Kirk Cousins was going through and it was just like he would even have to weekly have to go to a chiropractor and have them like get him ready for games. And it's just like, I don't even, I, I, you ever crack your knuckles? Like they hurt sometimes. If you crack the wrong one that ain't been cracked in a while, just imagine that happening to your body and you're already in pain. But I mean, they say that like going to a chiropractor is great for you, but um, it might be. And uh, he was saying that he learned that from uh, uh, Santana Moss. And Santana Moss taught him when he was playing with uh, the Commanders that, you know, this is what I have to do weekly. And this was in Santana Moss' uh, last two seasons of his career. And he was just talking about how he made it that long. You know, I think he lasted 14 years in the, in the league. And he was just describing to Kirk Cousins how he did it. And it was just trying to take care of his body. Like, that's the most important thing. And... Man, like, I just, I now I got a different, I got a different feeling for quarterbacks. Like, I, I have nothing to say, honestly. I have nothing to say. Just keep trying, keep doing better, you know, keep, get back out there. That's all I got to say. Like, I have nothing to say bad about Sam Howe this year. Like, honestly, it's a learning year. He, and then when it came to the playbook, when it came to the playbook, they yelling out words I don't even know. I would never I would never be able to remember a play. A play. Just because it just has so many loops and turns. And it's like sometimes they even saying stuff stuff for each and every person. Like it's the type of play, the person that it's for, then the route they gotta make, and then it's little words that can be switched up. And it could be the same play, but a different person. It's just like, yo, like, and it was just so much that went into it. And it was like, you really, and Kirk Cousins was talking about um, how going to school really, it was either Kirk Cousins or uh, Marcus Mariota that was talking about how going to school really plays a role. Like studying, you have to know how to study, like in order for you to make it in the NFL. Because if you don't, then it, you have to find a way to study. You got You have to because if you don't, that plays a role in how you play in the NFL. So, man, I learned a lot from just the first episode, and I'm like on episode five now, and I'm still. I'm after I finish this, I'm going to watch it again just because it's just like it gives you a, a deeper perspective into, you know, their world. And I always, I look, I wanted to be a quarterback at one point, you know what I'm saying? But now it's like, ugh, I seen a hit by De'Ron Payne, and I'm just like, sheesh. Like, 
ah oh, man, like he was just in pain. Like, and then Kirk Cousins was in pain from the hit that throughout the whole entire game, he was just grunting and moaning, like, because he got to deal with that pain. Like, and then honestly, for me, when I was watching the game, it's quarterbacks first who take the most injuries uh, and just the most pain. Then you got running backs. And that's another thing. I'm not understanding why running backs is not getting paid. Like, you know, they, they, sometimes they ask them to run and and catch it. So you're telling me you're turning me into a running back and a wide receiver at the same time? So I'm not understanding why running backs is not getting paid. I feel like that is just disrespectful in every way possible. And I feel like if a running back has to catch and run, I feel like they should be getting paid at least close to a wide receiver or above a wide receiver, honestly. Because I take the most hits. But, yeah, you know, uh, honestly, I just feel like this season is going to be great for us. And I think um, we're taking all the great, great movements. And, you know, we have Jacoby right there by Sam Howe's side. He's not doing it alone. And he has somebody that got him through it, who's been through it many times under great quarterbacks like Deshaun Watson and uh, Tom Brady, for example. And I think we have all the the keys that you know Sam Howe needs and he's going to have a great year and he also playing with the guy from uh, North Carolina that used to play with him so I can't remember his name right now why can't I remember his name like you got let me, let me go down the list real quick Jahan Dawson Terry McLaurin Curtis Samuel and that's a person that I didn't see out there I said it before but yeah I didn't see Curtis Samuel out there and I, I was maybe he had some family issues or something or he just wanted to spend some time with his family and that that, that also could be the same for Antonio Gibson. I didn't see him out there in that practice. But, yeah, I think that was a great practice for them to have. And I think this Friday, the rookies got to come back in and um, start. So I can't wait to see, like, the highlights from that. And, man, I just am still mad that we didn't make it on Hard Knocks. But, you know, we kind of got a little bit of that from uh, – what is his name? Why can't I remember his name? John Donovan, I can't remember that boy name to save my life right now. I remember the backups. I can't remember him. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna be so pissed when I when I get off of this and I realize what his name is. But yeah, like he's just showing us an insight. So y'all might want to go subscribe to his channel, the uh, wide receiver that I can't remember on our team. That's like that's that lost his position to Jahan Dawson last season. But um. Yeah, he he's great, and uh, his he's he looked like it's gonna be a better year than last year, and you know I can tell he's taking all the necessary steps to do that too. So our offense is looking sweet, and I just like that they coming together, you know, to really get familiar with this offense and the terminology. And I just think Sam Howell's gonna have a great year, and I, like I said before, and I'm gonna keep saying it every game, this is gonna be a great season for us, and I feel like it's a playoff season for us too. So, and you know, Ron Rivera got to do his thing this year. Everybody keeps saying it, and I'm starting to see it. And I think that's what's going to have to happen. He's going to have to go up this year. He got he got to do his thing so he can stay on his team. And, uh, you know, uh, Eric Vennie got to do his thing as well so he can prove to people that he is more than just Andy Reid, you know. He is Eric Vennie. You know, he can he can do it. And he's a great offensive coordinator, and he can be an offensive head coach, you know. So, man, like uh, – and he can be a head coach, you know what I'm saying? So I can't wait to see what happens. And then Sam, Sam Howe and everybody got to do something this year. Everybody has something to do. I can go down the list of the whole entire team and what they got to do and be better at. But honestly, everybody got to do their thing this year. And, man, please pay those running backs. And then also, we need to start a petition for them. They deserve it. They deserve every penny. And, um, man, just... I would greatly appreciate if y'all subscribe to the channel. And I thank you for making it this far. I know this is a long video, but I appreciate y'all, man. And, uh, yeah. And if you would like to donate to the channel, definitely do that for me. Greatly appreciate y'all. And, and thank you, too, because I just made, I'm like, I'm right there at the cusp of making it to 500 subscribers. So I greatly appreciate everyone that's been watching these videos and taking a part in it and helping me out. 